Moving on, and another way the pandemic is impacting the cattle industry is with a shortage of distiller's grains. Less travel and less need for fuel has given way to a decreased demand for ethanol, which distiller's grains are a byproduct of. Nebraska Extension Beef Feedlot Nutrition Specialist Galen Erickson joined me this week to offer some ways producers can replace distiller's grains in cattle diets. Distiller's grains provide protein and energy. And so some situations you're feeding distiller's grains primarily as a protein supplement. In many cases, that might be a cow that needs extra protein, or it may be a backgrounding calf that's on a high forage diet. And the interesting thing about proteins, it gets a little complicated, is that uh, generally protein we think of as having two functions when we feed it to cattle. We need protein that helps the microbes in the rumen. We call that rumen degradable protein. And we need, if, if the microbes can't produce enough protein to meet the animal's needs, then we feed what we call bypass protein. Bypasses the microbes in the rumen. And we call that rumen undegradable protein. So the, the net result is this. Distiller's grains are probably historically have been the most economical source of bypass protein. So they fit really well when fed with to, for, to forage fed cattle and especially younger, lighter growing cattle. With that said, works great in the feedlot setting too, where we replace corn. And there we're using as both protein and energy source. And of course, that's something we've researched heavily and, and it feeds better than corn. So it's not as simple as, as saying, well, I'm just gonna buy this other protein because it may not be the right type. Mm -hmm. You can't just replace it with something like urea, even though urea is fine, excellent protein source if needed for the microbes, it's not the same as distillers. So, uh, but if you're a feeder, if you feed cattle, um, you've been getting both. You've been getting the protein and the energy and now it, when you replace distillers, you gotta find alternative protein as well as uh, probably not the expectation, to change your expectation if the cattle won't perform quite as well. And as far as health issues we might need to watch out for in cattle if they're taking in fewer distiller's grains, anything you can speak on with that? Well, certainly distiller's grains work great for receiving calves and, and when calves first come in because it has the right kind of protein, but it's also very palatable. So um, uh, you ought to be a little careful. There's probably a little bit more challenge on how to bring in new calves. But probably the biggest issue is if you've got cattle that are on feed and being fed distiller's grains, then you no longer have that source. Um, the biggest risk there is pulling the distillers out and replacing it with corn. You increase the starch content in the diet, can lead to uh, overconsumption of starch and, and acidosis in the rumen. Too much acid being produced too fast can cause more bloat incidences. So there are some, um, some real challenges primarily related to uh, replacing distillers with something like starch and corn or other grains, but it's almost all acidosis related and, and that kind of risk. Okay, and uh, would like to get into some of the recommendations that you have for producers and feed yards, what they should do if they're running low on distiller's grains or maybe they've just run out of them completely. What are some of the main points that you'd like to highlight with that? Well, I think one of the things that distillers allows us to do is um, feed lower quality forages. So many, many feed yards have now used stalks or, or straws or low quality haze as a roughage or as the forage in the diet. Those are fed generally at low inclusions, less than 10% of the diet. Well, they work well because they're mixed in with wet, wet or modified wet distiller's grains. Um, if we have to pull the distillers, now you generally would see a benefit of feeding higher quality forages for rough feed, such as alfalfa hay. Uh, if you have corn silage, that would be great because it adds moisture and helps with mixing. So first considerations, forage and how you're feeding it. Secondly is moisture in the diet. It's actually a benefit because it helps with mixing. So if you don't have access to some of the wet distiller's grains, now you want to look at other ways to add moisture. That can be liquid byproducts, that could be water, that could be wet forages like silages, could be wet corn like high moisture corn, um, liquid uh, supplements, all those liquids help with holding the diet together, mixing and preventing sorting. 
And then the big issue is what to do about supplemental protein. You will have to supplement additional uh, protein in your supplement that you're purchasing. That's primarily going to be urea, but remember, that's not exactly comparing apples to apples in protein type. So the real conundrums, what do I do with young, lightweight, growing cattle that may respond to this bypass protein that's high in distillers? And um, there's not a lot of inexpensive options out there. So many people will probably feed more soybean meal, but it'll take even more soybean meal in some of those situations. So, you know, we've taken it for granted for almost 15 to 20 years just feeding distillers. And so, but with all that said, We've, we can feed cattle without distillers, but it's, uh, it's uh, just a little more challenging. So obviously we're gonna feed more corn. Last thing I would mention is it's very important to still price the distillers and make sure it's a competitive buy relative to other protein sources because the price unfortunately has, has certainly um, gone up compared to corn price. So it, it encourages us to fine tune it and feed just what we need anyway. Um, but I would still encourage producers to price it on a per unit of protein basis to make sure it compares favorably with other sources.